So, dear friends, many of you have asked themselves, what does it mean to be a born-again Christian or a born-again and confessed follower of Jesus Christ in contrast to a traditional Christian or a religious Christian? I can tell you, born-again and confessed Christians do really believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only true living God and they do really believe that the Bible is his incorruptible and reliable word. So we believe what God tells us in his word in the Bible and not what priests tell us that contradicts the Bible, for example. Um, as Christian religion has added many unbiblical doctrine, rituals, and scriptures to the Bible that contradicts the Bible, that is even blasphemous um, and anti-Christian in many way, in many ways. So that's the main difference, right? We know that Jesus tells us in the Bible we need to get born again, otherwise we won't see the heavenly kingdom. What does that mean? That means we're getting born into this world spiritually dead for God. That's why we all must die, right? Because the wages of sin is death, according to the Bible. Um, that means God is paying us in death for our sins. That means we all are sinners because I don't know any person um, who lives forever, I mean, except Jesus, who is God and who is there ever since, who has no beginning and no end, right? Who is the Creator, the Father. So, that's the main difference. Um, and we reject all unbiblical approaches within Christianity. That means um, we reject child baptism because it's nowhere written in the Bible. We reject the worship of Mary because it's nowhere mentioned in the Bible that we should do that. Um, it says that we should not pray to people, that we should not worship people, that we should not worship idols. We should only pray to the one and only true living God through the Son, Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Jesus says, the Father and me are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That means God can be in heaven and on earth at the same time. Because that's absolutely possible for God. It's doable for God because He's omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful, everlasting, all-knowing. Of course He can do that. The Father can be in heaven and the Son can be on earth to pay for our sins. And that's what He did. So uh, that's the main difference. <clears throat> we really truly believe that the Bible tells us the truth. So many people would say, but I mean, the Bible has been written by human beings, right? That's not entirely true. The Bible has been written down by human beings who were in contact with God, right? So the author is God, and people just, human beings just wrote down what God told them. Why do I believe this? Because the Bible presents us more than 3,200 biblical prophecies that have already come true. And those biblical prophecies are precisely formulated that, for example, um, Israel would be destroyed and then um, there, there would be no temple. And there's no temple up until this moment. Uh, but that Israel would be refounded and that God will gather all the scattered tribes of Israel back to the Holy Land. And that happens since 1948, right? Or that the big river Euphrates will dry up in the end times and it's already, it's it's drying up right in front of our very eyes. For example, though, so this is very precisely formulated prophecy and no one else but God could give prophecy because he knows everything because he's out of time, space and matter. He just created it. But I mean, he can see everything from the beginning till the end. So he can give us hints in his word. That's what I believe in. And that's what all born again Christians believe in. They believe in the Bible. They believe in God as the one and only authority and his word. 
and no religion, um, no institution of church, no other rituals that are no, nowhere mentioned in the Bible. So that's the main difference, okay? So I hope I could explain this to you properly enough. And um, everyone can get born again if they truly repent and trust in Jesus Christ alone, that he did it all. I mean, because he loves us and does not want us to get lost, he came down to earth and um, paid the bill for us, right? That's what the word tells us, and that that's what even historians tell tell us, because there's other biblical sources who prove that there was Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that uh, people claim that he is the true Messiah, the one and only um, Savior, the King of the Jews, as it was promised in the Old Testament, by the way, and. Um, that he died for the sin of the world and that he resurrected. I mean, alter biblical sources prove this. Yeah, they don't tell you, but this is the truth. You can do your own research. So that's the main difference between religious Christians because religious faith does not save you. That's what Jesus tells to Nicodemus, who was a high ranking religious person during the times of Jesus, right? Jesus says, unless you're not born again, you won't see the heavenly kingdom. So we need to receive the Holy Spirit. That's the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So God gives us the Holy Spirit when we repent, return from sin, and trust in Jesus Christ alone as the one and only true living God, Lord and Savior. Um, and then we ask Jesus to come into our lives and to change our hearts for the better and to transform us through the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, I can recommend this to you. Get in contact with the Lord, get right with the Lord, and get saved for all eternity because one day He's coming back pretty soon and He will judge this fallen, rotten, and depraved world 100% righteously because there's no sin in God. He gave us a free will, and the world as it is is the result, according to our free will, that we abused against God's law. We wanted to know what sin is. Now we know. Now we have to deal with the results of our free choices um, but God loved us so much that he left his divine throne came down to earth paid for our sins because he does not want us to get lost and to perish so that's good news people Jesus Christ loves you and you can come to him each minute get right with the Lord right now what hinders you the main gap between us and God is pride mainly I know what I'm talking about. It took long to humble my heart and to open my heart to God, but one day it happened, and I'm absolutely thankful that I found the truth. And Jesus tells us, ask, and you will be answered. Knock on the door, and I will open. Um, search so that you're going to find, and the truth will set you free. So Jesus himself defines it. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door, there's no way to the Father but by me. So there's no other way to paradise but Jesus. Why? Because there's no one who paid for your sins. I mean, you can look around in every philosophy or religion. No one died for your sins and offered you himself. But God, the one and only true living God of the Bible, he became a human being and paid for your sins because he loves you. That's the main difference. And that's crucial. I mean, why do we say before Christ and after Christ all over the world? Because God fixed it. That's it. Because God's the truth so that no one will have an excuse, right? The whole world screams before Christ and after Christ, even though, well, let's say the vast majority does not believe in the one and only true living God, Jesus Christ. But that's the narrow path that Jesus describes. Not many people will walk the narrow path the vast majority will walk on on the on the bright on the white path right and the white path leads directly into destruction so yeah come to come to the lord get right with the lord get born again get saved so jesus can heal your heart i mean i, I was suffering from depression for 35 years no not anymore now not anymore really because uh, jesus healed me i i was suffering from the disconnection um, from the one and only true living God, from my Lord and Savior. That's why I was depressed. That's why I found this world pretty unlogical. 
I mean, do you really believe that nothing has created everything randomly out of nothing, which is scientifically impossible, right? But people believe this, and I lack religious faith to believe such nonsense, because I've never seen a car popping up beside me, or a bike, or a building, never seen a picture drawing itself, or a piece of music writing itself. It's impossible. We know that. So the whole creation screams that there is a savior and we can identify him as his law is identifiable. One and one plus one equals two. That's that's a fact, right? X and Y chromosomes define two genders. That's a fact, right? Even though nowadays people want to tell you that it's not that way, but that's a lie, of course. That's deception. So um, there's there's verifiable fixed truth unchangeable truth all over the whole universe or in the whole universe and uh, this truth proves that there's a truth giver I mean our DNA is a program who a program cannot program itself so um, there's a programmer for your DNA and he has put his fingerprint into the DNA you can find it um, it's very stunning because DNA is also maths and the Hebrew alphabet tells you that Yahweh is in your DNA. I'm not kidding. You can find out yourself. So, um, yeah, that's the truth that I believe in. And that's the main difference between religious Christians or traditional Christians who believe that they probably have to try and become better persons to justify themselves in front of God. But... That's nowhere written in the Bible. The Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, you can't do anything to get saved. All you can do is trust on me and believe in me and repent and return from sin and then the Holy Spirit comes over you. That makes you born again. That's the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That's exactly described in the Word of God through Jesus. So... I hope your explanation, uh, my explanation was helpful to you. Um, all the best from Germany in the world, and I love you. God loves you too. Jesus Christ saves. Bye-bye.